Now, you know, we talked a lot about the hierarchical structure of goals, you know. And so here, here's, something, here's something to think about. So the thing that announces itself as error has a twofold nature. That's because it's chaos and order at the same time. Or it's because it's all the archetypal structures at the same time. It's the dragon of chaos. It's the great mother, positive and negative. It's the great father, positive and negative. It's the individual, hero and adversary. All of that manifests itself in the moment of error. Right? The archetypes come forward. Did you make an error because you're a bad person? Could be. Now, so, so one of the things to think about with regards to that is, you know, in the Mesopotamian creation story, when, uh, when, when Tiamat comes flooding back, it's so interesting, that story. You think about what she does. So she's the archetype of error, let's say, the error that can take you out, that can dissolve you in salt water. <coughs> Tears. Well, she's irritated because Apsu was destroyed, so the, the, the structure is gone. Carelessness has destroyed the structure. Up comes Tiamat, she's not happy. What does she do? She prepares a phalanx of monstrous monsters. It's exactly what the story says. She produces a whole horde of monsters to come at you. And she puts Kingu at their head. And Kingu is the king of the monsters. And later, so he's the ultimate bad guy. He's Satan for all intents and purposes, in the Mesopotamian version. It's out of him that Marduk makes human beings. It's out of his blood that Marduk makes human beings. That's a critical issue, man. The Mesopotamians said, imagine the worst monster you can possibly imagine. The king of all the monsters. That's the blood of human beings. Wow. So what, that, what does that mean? Well, it means that one of the terrible things that lurks, <clears throat> let's say that you've been in a long-term relationship and it collapses. Let's say you were, you know, you had a tendency towards alcoholism. You weren't so great with regards to your drug use. You're not that conscientious. And you had like four or five kind of low-rent affairs. And you know it. Your marriage collapses. Bang. Well, who do you first meet when you fall into chaos? You meet King of the Monsters, and he's you. It's like, why did my marriage fall apart? What did I do wrong? Bang, 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 bang. I did all these things wrong. Why? Because that thing inhabits me. What is it? Well, that's the most horrifying question. Right? Well, that's why. So down there in the archetypal space, all these things lurk. The hero and the adversary. Well, you've just met the adversary. Well, maybe you were a tyrant. That's certainly possible. Maybe everything around you was chaotic. So what do you encounter when things fall apart? You encounter the adversary, you encounter the tyrant, you encounter the catastrophe of nature, and you encounter the dragon of the chaos. And they're all intermingled. You have to sort that out. That's what happens to Ellis when she goes down the rabbit hole, right? She meets the Red Queen. And the Red Queen is always running around. Off with their heads, off with their heads. And she says, in my kingdom, you have to run as fast as you can just to stay in the same place. Right? Down the rabbit hole, you meet the archetypes. And so, okay, so back to responsibility. Well, one of the things Solzhenitsyn detailed, you know, he said, well, how do societies go corrupt? He said, it's easy. One little sin at a time. You go to work, someone's lording it over you. You know that they're tyrannical. You don't have the wherewithal to stand up. It's like, okay, you're a slave. And so if you continue to agree to be a slave, you will continue to generate tyrants. Right? And the only thing that can stop you from doing that, I think, is the right kind of terror. It's like, be careful what you give up. Because and that's this logos. Okay, so so all right. So that's this logos. The logos is the thing that enables you to mediate between a between order and chaos, and maybe you have to have some faith in that. It's like, well, what should you do if someone is harassing you? Well, you should fight back. Okay, what is that? What's the most effective way to fight back? Well, sometimes it's physical, but that's not necessarily for the best. Maybe it's through articulation. Maybe it's through analysis, right? You want to be sharp. You want to be able to decompose a problem. You want to be able to formulate an argument and a counter response. And maybe you want to be so good at that, that people don't mess with you to begin with. And then you're a perfectly articulate counter monster, and you never have to take your sword out. That's, that's the place that you want to be. It's like, people should know 
after three seconds of interacting with you, that harassing you will be a seriously bad idea. And then you'll have a perfectly fine time with them. So, and that's part of, you know, so there's some utility in meeting the devil in the underworld, right? Because maybe he's got something to teach you. That's certainly possible. And, that, and one of the things that you can be taught is that your normative morality, which is basically your harmlessness and your naivety masquerading as virtue, is n completely insufficient to protect you in the world, especially against the sorts of things that you're talking about, which are tyrant tyranny. Tyrants will push until you push back. It's in their nature. They don't have internal controls. So they just push and push and push and push and push and push. Even kids do that. Like Little kids do that all the time. They'll just push you until they hit a wall. They're actually quite happy when they hit a wall because the last thing a child wants is a universe without walls. It terrifies them, right? They want to see, well, I'm in a swimming pool. There's an edge. They don't want to see, oh, 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 this isn't a swimming pool. This is an ocean. I'm in the middle of an ocean. I'm going to drown. That's a terrible thing for children. That's why they need discipline and structure. Because it's consistency and predictability and routine and all the things that are extraordinarily helpful to them. Okay, so now, think about that hierarchy that we talked about. So, you're not in a story. You're in nested stories. And the nested stories ground themselves in action, in actual embodied action. So, if you're going to sit... If you're going to be a good uh, partner, maybe you help prepare the meals. And to help prepare the meals means you pick up a plate with your hand and you move it physically through space and you put it on the table. That's where it stops being an abstraction. So at the bottom of an ethical hierarchy of value are actions. Not things, that's the scientific world, but actions. And then you can label the actions with abstractions as you move up the hierarchy so you're good at setting the table so that means you're good at making dinner so that means that you've got one element of good being a good partner in place and being a good partner is one element of being a good person and so you you're not so good at setting the table and you say well I'm not a good person it's like well no you should go down to the higher resolution levels of the hierarchy and start there and that's what you do when you're arguing with people but there's another thing that's really useful about conceptualizing the hierarchy in this manner. So, what time is it? So I think what we'll do is we'll stop now for 10 minutes and I'll, because I want to bring up this diagram. Because what I want to do next is, it's a bleak story at the moment because the story is something like, <clears throat> you're going to lay out oversimplifications in the world and they're going to be prone to catastrophic error and then you have to encounter what's terrifying in order to progress, and so what that means is that progression is always dependent on terror, something like that. And there's some truth in that, and that's why people don't progress. But it's not a sufficient truth, and I want to unpack that when we come back. So let's come back in 10 minutes, and then I'll do, I can unpack that. <laughs>